All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be an interesting live stream, this one. A very, very interesting article has been dropped by Liam Toomey. I don't know whether you guys are um, subscribed to... Uh, the Athletic and all the latest articles that drop uh, in, in the Athletic uh, from a Chelsea point of view. But this was a very, very um, intriguing article from Liam Toomey, which there are some aspects that we need to understand, digest, and see what it, you know, what it kind of makes out to be. And then there is an element of where I kind of feel like uh, these excuses, there are certain level of excuses that are you know starting to materialize as the season is about to kick start again in the Premier League and all across the world. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and dissect this particular article. I just I just finished reading it. It was actually a it was actually a nice read. Uh, if you haven't read it, please take the opportunity to read it. But we're going to talk about this, and I'll let you know what that article is about. Um, that way, that way we can have a discussion. But it's something that we've talked about already uh, during uh, this World Cup period. Is that you know there will be? It, it's going to be strange times. It's going to be strange times. Like emotionally, these players were very much vested in the World Cup. There's no doubt about that. Even prior to the World Cup, we saw the level of performances were a little bit iffy, not a little bit, a lot iffy. And certain players, you felt like mm, the mind is probably not at the club football level at the moment. It's probably at the international level. And um, now that it's over, certain players are face, have, have faced massive disappointments in the World Cup. And... Certain players who have faced success are probably not not completely uh, lighting it up in in the in the club level. So we're going to talk about all of these. Uh, nearly fifty of you guys are live right now. Smash the like button, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you've come through. We want to try and get as many likes as we can. Obviously, the target is one hundred during the live stream. We're not really going to talk too much about transfer news today uh, on this particular stream. We'll keep the transfer news for. The video that comes in the evening UK time. So obviously there's a link. Uh, so I thank you so much for providing the link for uh, Sufi and Amrabat. I'm not really going to touch too much on that. I'm probably going to leave that for the later video where we talk about a whole heap of transfer news that will materialize. But I definitely want to react to this Liam Toomey's latest article right now. So as you guys are coming through, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Uh, point 44, good to see you. Sai Krishna as well, Balak CFC. Miz, back again with the controversial headline. Man thinks to me is entire English media. I can tell he's ready to cut promo like The Rock. <laughs> Look, you're going to have to juice up the, the the title, man. You have to. Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, As you know, the, the journalists out there, the media out there, they always juice up the titles so why, why should i be any different but i don't know whether you read the article or not um it somewhat gives me the idea that some of these journalists are ready to protect grand potter to a certain degree um whether rightly or wrongly that's for you guys to decide but i'm going to present both sides of the coin i'm not going to be biased and just focus on one side i think there is a lot of truth behind what liam toomey has written um which I have said previously anyway. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. Phenomenal Finn, good to see you. Abdi Fata, good to see you. Starboy, Shubra, uh, Sukamoto, Michael, G11W, good to see you, my man. Yasin, Mason, Victor, Joel, uh, Jitonga. Yeah, great, 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 great. Okay, let's have a look at Liam Toomey's tweet first up. This is what he tweeted out uh, literally about an hour ago. Major international comps take a big emotional and physical toll on players. We've seen it before with AFCON and mid-season World Cup is an unprecedented challenge for club coaches. 
Chelsea had more players in Qatar than any Premier League club bar City. And this is the article. You guys can check that out if you're you know, a subscriber to The Athletic. Um, look, before I get into the article, before I get into the article, I just want to paint the picture where Chelsea were prior to the World Cup. I think most of you guys would know if you follow Chelsea Football Club. We weren't doing good before the World Cup. There was a patch of period uh, just before Rhys James got injured where we looked all right. There was the two victories against AC Milan, uh, some nice victories in the Premier League as well. And, you know, we turned things around in the Champions League. We went from bottom of the table to top of the table in our group and we ended up winning. So kudos to kudos to Graham Potter and the team to be able to do that. But as soon as Rhys James was injured, it started declining hard and now it's at a point where um now it's at a point where uh, just something just caught my eye here what's what's people saying in the live chat uh, it was already written in the stars at Balak, it was already written in the stars but in all seriousness, I agree we were told the World Cup was an excuse and now we are being told the impact of the World Cup is an excuse. Exactly, exactly. And this is what we're going to talk about. So, you know, before the World Cup, I think the current stat is, uh, what is it at the moment? I think we've got four losses, three Premier League losses in a row and four in between there was a loss in the Carabao Cup. And it's not, it's not looking great. I think we're lingering around in the Premier League table around 8th, ninth, something like that. Uh, someone check the table and let me know. And teams such as Newcastle are a huge threat to breaking up this top four. They're looking very sharp, very good. Obviously, teams like City, Liv um, Arsenal, they're, they're progressing very well. They're doing going ahead and, and, and just breezing through this particular particular table yes it's early days you know but still they're breezing through the league for the time being Liverpool is starting to make a slow comeback eight as some people are saying yep and Man United are there and thereabouts their Spurs as well looking fairly strong so and then there's teams like Brighton and one who we finding it very difficult to compete against as well Brighton absolutely walloped us and then players go on the World Cup break and as I said Prior to the World Cup, I completely believe some of the players are already clocked out. I, I think some of these players had already clocked out and they were thinking about the World Cup and, you know, they didn't want to get injured. Unluckily, the players that got injured, that's sad, sad story for them. But there were players, you just kind of got the feeling. And, and, I'm, and I'm also, you know, just remembering our lineup against Newcastle. There was a lot of players that were potentially going to the World Cup didn't even feature in that particular game or didn't start something or other um, and they ended up going to the World Cup. And now in this World Cup, right, now in this World Cup, if you look at, we've still got Kovacic and Ziyech still to play the third third um, you know, place match and, and they've been quite successful. But if you look at all the other players that have been involved from a Chelsea point of view, there's been some disappointments. For example, Kai Havertz with Germany, you know, out in the group stage. Massive disappointment. You know he's hurting. Christian Pulisic, as much as they'll be happy with what they were able to do in the group stage, but you saw what he stated in the Instagram and, and the article, Liam Toomey talks about that, that you know this may impact, have an emotional impact. Of course, it will have an emotional impact. And in his Instagram story, I think he said something like, this will hurt for a little while. Um, Aspilicueta, even though he didn't feature too much for Spain, um, but I think Spain would be would be would be somewhat disappointed as well, uh, knowing that you know they probably were the favourites. Not probably, they definitely were the favourites to go uh, ahead of, of um, Morocco, um, England with Mason Mount and Raheem Sterling. Mason lost his starting lineup position. How he comes back from that, you know, off the back of also. Uh, the fact that England, um, you know, England didn't progress well. It, I mean, well, you know, they, they got knocked out by France. They probably expected that particular match. Maybe they could have done something. Um, 
to how England feels about that. You know, the English players were very, very upset. Uh, you know, they felt that maybe they could have taken France. Raheem Sterling with all the issues, personal issues that he's had. So it's strange. So now let's look at what this article really talked about. This article starts saying that it, it kind of gives me the vibe. It starts off by saying that it's going to be very difficult to, to manage this emotional situation with all these players. Like how will Graham Potter, you know, be able to manage all these? It also goes on to say that he is the right man to manage all this. He is the right man. But I kind of got the vibe that Liam Toomey was trying to say, in essence, to Chelsea fans that look, don't worry if 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 some of the results start going a little bit south. It's very normal. You know, some of these players may not be mentally right coming into the Chelsea team, uh, so and so forth. And I'm like, do you know what? I understand the emotional side. I do. I get it. But you're back in club football now. You're back in club football. And Chelsea need performance. We need performance, man. And these players, it's 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 a strange. It, it's it's honestly, it's a bit of a conundrum because players that have done well, for example, Hakim Ziyech, he's done well. He's going to come back to Chelsea and potentially he's not going to be favoured again. Rightly or wrongly, so he won't. Most likely, he won't be. He won't be favoured again because he wasn't favoured before the World Cup. Just because he's had a good World Cup, I don't know whether it changes any of the any of the mindset of whether he fits into the Chelsea team or not. Unless Potter really looks at this situation and goes, "Do you know what? Maybe maybe I want to integrate Ziyech in." But I highly doubt he'll just you know completely change that around. And there's always been rumor about how Ziyech wants to leave in January. Christian Pulisic is another one. Do you know what I mean? Like he's had a good situation with the USA team, but then that loss against Netherlands. I'm pretty sure US, USA probably thought there were a good chance against Netherlands. They probably thought there were a good chance. Even I thought maybe that was going to be an upset over there. I just didn't know that Netherlands were going to rock up so well and take care of USA the manner in the manner that they did. Now, Pulisic comes back to Chelsea and he's in the same situation as well where not completely loved. The fan base is a bit split as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, where will Mason Mount's headspace be as well? You know, in the World Cup stage. He's loved. He's loved by every manager. So you probably know Mason Mount will come back and he'll start every single game. Same with Raheem Sterling. But how would he, their mindset be knowing what England's done? So, but for me, and Kai Havertz is the other one. Kai Havertz has been so heavily criticised for the past 12 months. And the kind of World Cup that Germany had, and you know he was devastated. There was a match against Spain where he was unused. Germany were losing 1-0 and Havertz did not even feature from the bench. And this is what the article goes on to say. Like some of these players are going to be in different mindsets and it's going to be difficult. And, you know, there could be some, you know, strange results, this, that, and the other. Like It doesn't absolutely go on to say that, but it kind of gives you the vibe that it's it could be a strange situation at Chelsea, but Graham Potter's the right man to control all of this. And I'm like... Graham Potter better sit down. I'm pretty sure he will. I'm pretty sure he'll, once all the players are back from the World Cup, he better sit down and, and do a reset in all, in all of these players. I get the emotional factor. I get that you've, it's a massive roller coaster with, with the World Cup and your national team. But Chelsea Football Club, I'm sorry, man. That game against Bournemouth, I, I don't know about you guys. Live chat, we've got nearly 130 of you guys are live right now. What are we expecting against Bournemouth? Like, I'm, I'm coming back to that situation before the World Cup where we had that phenomenon of, of XL, expected loss, moving into every game thinking, can we actually win this? I want to I wanna move away from that. I want to be able to go into match and go, we should be winning this. That game against Bournemouth, Bournemouth won't have the same issues. Only two of their players apparently went to the World Cup, and I'm pretty sure those two players... Um, uh, those two players are, are um, uh, 
uh, probably expected to be expected to be gone. Honestly, an L means uh, L about what, man? What am I taking an L for? What am I taking an L for? Phenomenal thing. Do you wanna do you wanna elaborate? Havertz might be upset about Germany going out, but means he doesn't help himself with his anonymous performances. When he does play, he's not even there and gets dragged off. No, this is what I'm saying. It just compounds. He was already not doing that well. And then he comes back off the back of that awful World Cup. How do you think, how do you think that's going to happen? Is how can Chelsea owners renew Jorginho's contract while they want Kante to ha leave on free transfer? Jorginho will ruin any... Okay. Michael, stick with the notion, my man. Stick with what we're talking about. Don't just randomly comment on stuff that we're not even talking about. Do you know what I mean? I want to I want to see what you guys feel about this article. Like, honestly want to have a good discussion about this article. We should have waited for the World Cup to end before sacking Tuchel. New manager like Enrique are available and we are stuck with Potter. Look, it is what it is. I think there were just too many games um, to 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 ride. And if the owners are not feeling it with Thomas Tuchel, I can't I can't say anything about that. Like I would have um, I would have I would have I would have liked to see you know uh, Tuchel stick around, but it is what it is. Because I'm saying L and L versus Bournemouth. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And L versus Bournemouth. See, this is the thing. As a fan base. Are we like I want to be confident? I want to be confident moving again, like moving into the game against Bournemouth. Hell, I do. I, I I feel you know, I'm pretty sure it's at Stamford Bridge, right? It's at Stamford Bridge after the World Cup. I'm thinking, look, now the World Cup's over, players come in, clear mindset. You know, forget about what's happened. Focus on the focus on the task ahead. Focus on Chelsea Football Club because we weren't doing well. We need to start picking up points now. I want to feel confident, but I'm worried. I'm literally worried. Could some of these players be vulnerable? Could they be emotionally fragile? Are we going to be ready? And I don't want any excuses. And it feels like. Some of these journalists are coming out and just setting us up, setting us up to be, setting us up to be, um, you know, setting us up to accept failure. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're sort of coming up with these articles to to soften soften the situation. You know, it's all it's all trying to play play stuff in your mind to ensure that. Don't, don't get too don't get too upset if if the results don't go your way. I I need the results to go our way straight after the World Cup. Eunice is in the house. Eunice, let me know if you're free, man. I would love to have this conversation with you. If you're free, and I know you're in uh, Twitter now, literally, I'm only going to go on for another 10, 20, uh, 10, 15 minutes. So if you're free, let me know in the live chat. Pop down because I think you've been alluding to this factor anyway. And I know in your channel, you're going to talk about it. But if you're free, I would love to hear um, just in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes um, what your thoughts are. I think it'll create a good discussion. Um, I definitely won't take up too much of your time. If you're free, if you're free. Can we play the World Cup again? I don't want the season to restart. I enjoyed uh, no depression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it was actually good to have the World Cup around. And now that the World Cup is done... Um, it's craziness again. Balak CFC, we are being told to wait for after the World Cup for form to pick up. Now the narrative has changed. Yeah, the narrative has changed again. Um, you'd think you'd think some of these articles would be like Chelsea got to start. Like you know, Grand Potter have to. He's got to start picking up some points. No more excuses from here on in. Chelsea can't just have this particular season as a write-off. It kind of seems like these journalists are trying to brainwash us a little bit. Um, and, and yeah, go on. I have 10 minutes. Beautiful, beautiful. That's brilliant, bro. Love it. Let me just send it to you on um, Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you don't know, Eunice is back on Twitter. And you should follow him straight away. So if you haven't done so yet... Follow units on Twitter. It's at units talk. I do miss the other one though. His last uh, last Twitter name, I think it was 
and I think his first name and his last name. Um, but it's now Eunice Talk. I think everyone will remember as Eunice Talk. Eunice, I'll just send you the link on Twitter DM. Uh, pop down when you can. So there you go. You guys are going to have Eunice in the house. Um, but yeah, Balak CFC, you're bang on. You're bang on. Like, we were told that after the World Cup, we're going, form was going to pick up. You know, Mason Mount said that after the World Cup, it's going to be, it's going to be, he's, they're going to try and make Chelsea, um, they'll, they'll make Chelsea proud. They'll make the fans proud. And now we're having these, and I'm telling you right now, I've seen these, these type of articles. They, they, they slide these articles in just to play in your mind, just to, just to sort of marinate, let it cook in your head and sort of make you accept maybe failure down the track and kind of deflecting away that, oh, it's not really Potter's fault. It's the World Cup's fault or it's this fault. It's the players emotionally vested. Um, but hey, Potter is still the right man to, to get all of these, all of these things um, sorted. Of course, he has to be the right man. In my opinion, you have to be the right man. You're the, you're the manager. You're the manager. I don't look. I'm not the manager. How how you would do it, I don't know. But you would need to sit down with all these players and be absolutely honest with them a week before the Bournemouth game. I know some of the players like Hakim Ziyech and Kovacic. They won't be around. They'll probably need a break. And there's already articles stating that they won't be ready for that particular game. But everyone else, everyone else, you better be ready. Kai Havertz, this season for you could potentially be your last season for Chelsea Football Club. Now, you may be happy with that. Kai Havertz might be thinking, do you know what? That's it. I, I'd rather just go back to Germany. He could be potentially happy with that. I don't know. But if you want to save your Chelsea career and you want to be part of the elite league, and let's be honest, Premier League is the most elite league, then you got to pick up your, you got to pick up your scraps, my man. You know, where, where's, where's the headspace of... I don't know, someone like Dennis Zakaria, for instance. He, he doesn't get to feature for Chelsea. For some reason, I don't know, like whether it's fitness or whether managers don't just seem to um, appreciate him or I don't know. It's sim similar thing happened in the World Cup where Dennis Zakaria didn't get to feature for Switzerland often enough. And yeah, like Mendy, Mendy and Koulibaly for Senegal. Mendy took so much criticism prior to the World Cup. And even in the World Cup, I don't think he was that great. There were a couple of losses that Senegal probably had were directly correlated to maybe Mendy. And Koulibaly at times looked a bit iffy as well. But them as a nation, they probably should be fairly happy with, with how their World Cup went. But then again, their loss to England 3-0, they probably fancied themselves to do something against England. So I, I, I really don't want to hear any more excuses after the World Cup. I need these players to wake up and, and play this season. It's time to play. You can accept a poorer season if there are positives to take from it. Have there been any positives to take from Potter's tenure so far? Look, the way it kind of ended before the World Cup, it was sour. You guys know nearly 170 of you guys are live right now. Just remember that time frame. A month, month and a half, maybe two months prior to leading up to the World Cup, it probably was very sour. But we we hung on because obviously we've got a new manager. We've got to stay patient, no problems. But after the World Cup, Potter, it's, it's on you, my man. Like, get the lineups right. If there are certain players that are not mentally right, you need to, you need to do something. Look at look at what look at what Ten Hag's doing with Sancho. Ten Hag's open and he's like, that guy's mentally not ready. He's, something's wrong with him. He could be suffering mentally and I hope he recovers from that. He's, he's training on his own and he's come out in media and he's been blunt about it. Maybe Ten Hag's fed up with it. He's like, I need, I need results. I can't be babysitting players. I need results. I, I, hope, I hope Potter has that guts. I hope Potter has that balls to... If there are certain players, and even if players that I like, for example, Hakim Ziyech, he comes back from the World Cup and he's all sulking again. I've said it many times. If, if, if we can't use him, then we better, in the first week of January, get rid of him. 
need to foster a good environment. But all of this comes from Graham Potter. And not just him and his backroom staff as well, of course. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's very important. Lineups are important. Ensuring you're utilizing the players that are in their right frame of mind. T1, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. An effective style of play is better than results. <laughs> Look, I hear you. I hear you. We do need an effective style. But at the moment, you cannot deny T1 that we need results as well. We do need results. We 100% need results. Uh, I can imagine players are holding off signing for Chelsea, waiting for performance to pick up, or a style of football they can actually see and connect with. Probably why Nkunku hasn't penned yet. I think Nkunku's done. I think Nkunku's done. Uh, I'm all set, Miz. Ready when you are. I can't see you, bro. Where are you in the... Why aren't you in the... Um, in the back room? Let me send you the link again. Why can't I see you? I can't add you. Go back in and come back in again. Send you link. I just sent it again. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I can't see you. That's why I was like, where are you, my man? But yeah. Um, let's see what else you guys are saying. Last few Chelsea games before the World Cup were awful to watch. Loads of possession, but toothless and clueless in final third. Potter needs to get our attacking patterns and tactics improved. Um, uh, isn't I sent it to you on your on your Twitter, um, Eunice? I sent it to you on your Twitter Twitter DM. Oh, I sent you a link. Yeah, yeah, I sent it to you on your Twitter DM, bro. On your latest, like the, the Twitter account that you opened up, bro. Your new Twitter account. Ah, there he is. There's my boy. I'm like, we made it. Where is <laughs> we made it. We made it. We made it. Yeah, bro, you made it. Um, first of all, my man, how you doing? Wow, can you hear me? Yeah, all good. Yeah, all good. Quality, can you hear me? quality. Yeah, I can. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. Hey, good, bro. Good. How are you, good. Doing, bro? It's been a long. I'm time. good, man. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been on here. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, well, first oh. of all, it's not coming home. How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, it's not for you either. So it's not for anyone. <laughs> it's not for anyone. This World Cup's not for anyone, bro. It's Honestly. No, but, least, you know, Southgate in charge. We expected this, didn't we? So. Yeah, absolutely. At least we can enjoy Morocco a little bit, huh? At least we can enjoy Morocco. they done us proud, man. they done us proud. Absolutely. they done the both of us proud. So, yeah. 100. 100. They did both of us proud. Okay, Yunus. I don't know if you got to read uh, Liam Toomey's uh, latest article. I found that very, very interesting. Um, I know you did. Did you get to read it? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't read um re read the whole thing. I've seen your tweet, I've seen what um what the caption is, I've seen the introduction to the article. I've not seen the whole thing though. So but obviously so there's a, a bit of protection, right? There is there I feel I feel there is because it's it's sneaky, it's very sneaky. You know, you know, you know, like Eunice, correct me if I'm wrong. Live chat as well, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Eunice, you know very much. Especially when it's an English manager, because I saw this with Lampard as well. Until when, when Lampard, everything started going south so yeah. badly, then the media was like, "Well, we can't protect this guy anymore. Like he's unprotectable now. We need to, we need to, you know, do something." But I've seen this with English managers where the English media they seep these little articles, they slip like slip these little articles in, kind of brainwashes you over a period of time and kind of sets you up that hey just stay patient don't be too hard on the manager this that the other if the results go south calm yourself and this article from Liam Toomey is starting to sort of get the get the mindset of the fans in the sense that look 
some of these players are going to come back from the World Cup, what emotional status they're going to be in, they yeah. may not be feeling it. And I don't know, results could be, you know, not improving. And you just need to relax because they're human beings. Christian Pulisic with USA, you know, he's a bit upset. Hakim Ziyech, he's seeing success, but he's not loved in Chelsea. Um, English boys, they've not seen the success. Mount lost his party. Like, I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? In Bournemouth, you better win. I don't, I don't care about any of this. Bournemouth first game, you better win. <laughs> Bro, it's it's like we've forgotten that these guys are meant to be some of the, you know, footballers at the highest level. Um, and this is part and parcel of the job. You know, you lose competitions. You feel gutted, of course, but you mm. put it behind you after a few days and you move on to the next thing. That's it. That is, that is what it takes to be a top-tier football player at this level. A professional football player. Key word here, professional. Whether it's win or lose, you have to deal with it professionally. Um, we seem to, yeah, well, not we. I'm not saying all of us because we we yeah. definitely know what's going on. But these journals, some of these journalists, man, um, it, yeah, I, I, I don't like to go down that route, but it just seems like this is how it is. If, if Graham Potter's name was Gianni Pablo, Right, sorry, his grandfather's name was sorry. There we are, right. You, w- there would not be an article like this, right? It's just how it is. It's the same situation that Southgate's had after the World Cup, yes. right? It's the same thing. Everyone's protecting this guy. I don't and it's... anyone else was getting sacked. Anyone else was getting sacked. Exactly, like much like you see all the other national managers getting what sacked, or they, they leave. They go. Yeah. I, I, I've done what I can. I can't take it further. I have to go. Yeah. I failed. I need to go. Get someone else in that can give this team a chance. And you get even even Southgate himself, right? We're not talk, we're not talking about Southgate for, for, for this. But as an example, even he is considering quitting, right? He's considering it and thinking, I, I might have reached the peak here. And everyone's like, no, no, we, we, you have to stay, right? You've been brilliant. Like, listen, Graham Potter <laughs> is going down the same route here. Um, yep. And the truth yep. be told is we, yes, are in transition. Uh, but how long we're going to be in transition for, I don't know. But um, we're in a transition. Um, we, we've we we've not had good results pre-World Cup. We're probably not going to get good results post-World Cup. We've got Man City twice in a row in the space of three days. That's going to be... Um, I'm worried against Bournemouth already. You know, right, so I don't right, know about your this confidence is the thing. level. But this is the thing. For Chelsea Football Club, no matter even if you are in transition, there's a level. You can't be just throwing results away and going, oh, Bobby, it's fine. We're in transition. We'll end up 12th. It's fine. This is it's gonna happen. <laughs> like, no. Like this is and people say we're we're self-entitled or we're being too um uh, you know, we're putting ourselves on a pedestal. Like we're you know, who who the hell do we think we are? We have to finish in the top four all the time. Like, no. Well, yes, that's the aim. We're Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? Like that is how it is. And and if we go below it, we have to accept it's a failure. That's it. Not to say it can't happen, but if it happens, it's a failure. Done. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand the, the, the protection. We'll see, though. We'll see what happens, because time will tell. It happened with Lampard. He had all tons of protection. Mm. We love lamps, right? But we were objective. Yeah. It got to a point where everyone did in, end up realising towards the end, like, yo, this can't continue. We'll see if the same happens with Potter. I hope not, yeah, but... Look, as you said, it's not like as if, do you know what, before the World Cup, we were flying, we were doing so well. Uh, and now after the World Cup, there are certain players that could be so emotionally vested that there could be a chance of some bad results. We're in a situation, Eunice, where we can't afford to have bad results. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I don't know who's going to have this conversation with the players, but someone needs to sit down with them. All of them, when they all return, I think most of them have returned, Bar Kovacic and Ziyech. Yeah, but once they all come down, Potter, backroom staff, they all need to go and go look, reset, forget what has happened in the World Cup. Like I can appreciate you emotionally invested, but now you're back at Chelsea. We're in trouble. We need to exactly, exactly. And and there's one key thing we have to remember here because pre World Cup we we all had doubts about the quality in the squad. Yes, right. We all had doubts, and we thought. This team maybe is just not good enough, right? Yeah. We we came to that point, and been talking about we this were in your doubting some of these time. players. 
Bro, this World Cup has been the biggest eye opener for all of us uh, that we can possibly imagine. Talk for to all me, of man. the players give, give that we were out in. Bro, <laughs> I was someone that was going, your Ziyech needs to go. And now I see what he's done this World Cup. I'm like, yo, this brother needs to stay. This, <laughs> they, they, you can see for Morocco, he's unbelievable. Pulisic for the States looks brilliant. Kovacic, this World Cup, had a great World Cup. Yeah. That all these players, bar maybe the Germans, right, have looked fantastic. So why is it that every time these guys come back to Chelsea, everyone goes flat? You know, and even not just not just the players that we currently have, but players that we've had previous, they've gone elsewhere. They've done good things. They've gone to the World Cup. They've played well. They've had other tournaments. They've played well. They're at Chelsea. They just stop. Mm. That needs to be investigated. Like, what is going on in this club? And that's not just down to Potter because this is a pre this is an issue that's gone down previous. But yeah. we need to have a manager that's going to be able to find a solution with these guys because these guys are not as rubbish as we were, you know, thinking. Or maybe they are. They're not. Clearly, they're not. They're not. And do you know what? On that point, Eunice, what you just said, like Graham Potter needs to get to the bottom of this. And I've been saying it that once. Chelsea kicks off again against Bournemouth and then Man City and whatnot. He better get the lineups. He better get the personnels right. Wh yeah. Whoever he kind of feels straight away that you're not meant to look at. I, I was just telling the live chat, Eunice, look at Eric Ten Hag. He was so brutal. Comes out and goes, Sanchez not in the right frame of mind. He's training on his own. Mentally, he's not well. Look, if it is a lot of to do with mental side of things, I hope Sanchez recovers. But at least Eric Ten Hag has been ballsy enough to to state in the in the in the media that I can't have a player that's going to be a passenger for me. I need to win. I hope Graham Potter looks at each and every one of these players' eyes and and picks up straight away that you're not maybe ready. You're not here at the moment. I can't have you disrupt this situation. We can work with you, find out how we can get you back, but right now you're not here. And that could be for Mace, that could be for Sterling, that could be for Ziyech, that could be for Kovacic, whoever. I don't care. It can be for anyone. But I hope... I just feel like, Eunice, and you, you've you recently gone to the training and you've spoken to Potter, like, what are we going to do? And Potter replied to you, yes, that is what we're going to try and do. Go for the... <laughs> like, I feel like he's, yeah. he's a little bit too just laissez-faire, like, do you know what I mean? Like, a little bit relaxed. Like, I want him to start being ruthless, man. I need him to start being ruthless. Yeah, and... Obviously, this goes back to the ownership as well. The, the vibe, I hope, isn't just because, it, it, you know, it can be Potter, but it can also come from above. If Potter's not mm -hmm. getting any pressure applied to him, then it's like, yeah, it's fine. We'll write the season off. No problem. It's okay. We'll, we'll build for next season and the season after, and this is a project for the future, and we're going to be okay. And Who's to say you're going to be okay, brother? Like, <laughs> the short time in the modern day is quite as important as it is thinking about the future because without yeah. the short term there is no long term right you need to be Correct. able to to build for for now with the eye of what you're looking to do long term you know exactly and with all these new young players around. that are coming through Eunice I'm like you're building for the future but what about now there won't be no future if there's no now bro because when you get teams that that have already made it you know teams that are already there or teams that are progressing a lot faster than us Newcastle Right, mm. you're gonna get overtaken and left in the dust, and there is yeah. no, you know, people are labeling Arsenal as the example, okay, and fair, but let's wait and see because that project isn't exactly finished just yet either. Um, and they've suffered in the years that they've gone through without Champions League football, with finishing where they have and, and, and whatnot, and all of a sudden, out of a click, they find themselves top of the table. But we'll see, because that's not something that you can just take on board now and go, oh, that's fantastic. It's great for now. Brilliant. Mm. Um, but going forward to the end of the season, we'll end up and see how, how it's, how it's going to finish. For Chelsea, there needs to be a way of finding some sort of consistency now, even if it means we're not going to win anything. For Fair enough. But you yeah. can't finish 10th. Do you know what I mean? Huh. Like, and just think, huh. yeah, that's okay. There needs to be some sort of pressure. There needs to be. And we'll take it from there. 100% man honestly I, I feel like everyone is I'm just getting this vibe Eunice and, I, and this is how we're going to wrap things up um, we'll, get, we'll get to see what Eunice feels about this I'm just getting this vibe Eunice that everyone's sort of trying to set us up to ex accept not ex 
expect as well, but to accept, accept mediocrity for a little bit. Stay patient. Yeah. We may yeah. be tenth. We may be eleventh. We may not get Champions League football, but accept it. Embrace it. Eventually enough, it'll all turn. And I feel like that's okay for Brighton. I'm not really sure if that's okay for Chelsea. Like, do you know this what I mean? is yeah, no, you're you're completely right. And this is where it's I, I appreciate the work that Brighton have done and the good yeah. things that Brighton have had, right? But with all due respect, th- that's not our level. And again, people are going to say, oh, that's arrogant of you to say. But no, no, I'm sorry. But Brighton are not even thinking of touching Champions League football. So why are you comparing yourselves to them? You know, you can take the good things that they've done, yes. And you can learn from people that are that are below, for sure. Not in a condes- condescending way. But I mean, like people, teams that are not achieving what you're looking to achieve, right? They may have good things that you can pick up, cool. But don't be them. Right now, it looks like we have actually become Chelsea and Hove Albion. Like we're doing everything and taking everything that they have and they want and they need and that, like we are we have become we they're, might as well move to the south coast. They're scouted players as well. Yeah, we, we all of a sudden, uh, yeah, we we've been we've we've got what's his name, um, Fofana, and all of a sudden yeah. he's the next. David Dutro, David Dutro, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah apparently do you know what I mean? Like, bro, like, not come on, like there has to be some sort of realistic outlook on this. Um, we we can't be comparing ourselves to Brighton. You know, and what you've said about accepting that sort of level, it can't mm. fly. You need to this is at the end of the day, let's look at let's look at this objectively. This is a sport. The aim is to win. Right? The aim <laughs> of being in the competition is to try and win the thing. That's what I want to do. Now, if I go down swinging, cool, no problem. If we lose, fair enough. It happens. But to just accept and go. Yeah, we're not going to reach there. We're, we're cool with this. We'll finish 10th. It's fine. No problem. Yeah, We're going to be back next season. Who's to say? You have to put yourself in the hat. You have to put yourself yeah. on a competitive level and build on that. Definitely try and get better. But not just lay back and go, oh, no, yeah, no, it's okay. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. No, man. That's, that's, not how it, that's not how it works. And Eunice, we've seen, like, people talk about Arsenal. Arsenal were in the wilderness for five six seasons in a row like is there we that, are is that what we want to suffer is suffer is that how long we want to suffer and this is the thing i appreciate if that's their model and that's how they want to do it and call cool, right fair enough but even now they're top of the table fantastic first half of the season but we've seen it happen before who's to say they're going to finish the season successfully they may get top four. I think they'll get top four. Absolutely. And that's a build upon of what they've achieved before. But if they have to suffer for five or six years to then just get top four, nah, bro, I'm not waiting that long. <laughs> You're smoking. Oh, yeah. That's... No, 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 no. Process, bro, process. <laughs> so. It's mad. It's mad. Ladies and gentlemen, look, we're going to wrap things up. I think the message that I wanted to put out here, and I think what Eunice is trying to put out as well, is just just be aware. Like all of these articles are going to come thick and fast now, and you know they're trying to set us up that some of these players might be emotionally bit bit vulnerable, and and you know Chelsea could have some volatility uh, once the Premier League kicks off again. And please don't blame Graham Potter on all of this. Look, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys that's just going to come here and bash Graham Potter. No, I don't think I've bashed him in this in this uh, stream as well, along with Eunice. I think some responsibilities come with the manager. It's your team, my man. Like, you've got to get a hold of it. Do you know what, I mean? you know, you know what this is? It's just, just gone into my head, right? It's, mm. it's almost like whoever's... Well, I mean, Liam to me, but the others as well. Anyone who's going to write these sort of things or say these sort of things have already in their been, head. Matt Law's, been, Matt Law's been talking a little bit in that tune as well, Eunice. It's like they've already preemptively in their heads accepted that this isn't going to go well. And yeah. Potter doesn't have a solution. So you know what? Other players are just not, they're suffering. They, they, they've been knocked out. We have to be careful. They've already got an excuse lined up because they know what's yeah. coming. You know? <laughs> It, that's how I read it. I don't read it as, oh, no, the players are genuinely hurt. Like, no. Players, yes, they accept it. They move on. Mm. And they have to. They're not going to dwell. You think the Chelsea dressing room are going to be full of lads going, I'm traumatised. My country got knocked out. You, I can't Eunice, play. Th- some of these players don't have the time oh. to dwell. Havertz has his career on the line. 
you, you don't have time to dwell, my man. You have your Bro, career on the line. It's done. World Cup's done. You move on. You knock it out. You're finished. The moment you leave Qatar, right, you have your little break. Yeah. You recover. You get back to training. That's it. World Cup's done. It's in the past. There's no point thinking about it. And they're not thinking about it. But as I said, it's almost like it's already an excuse lined up for what yep. is going to come. And if there was a manager in place that they knew was going to have a good hand on this team and get them going, this mm. article would not have been written in the first place. That's my point. If, if Tuka was around, Eunice, you best believe this article, article wouldn't would have exist. a different tune. Completely. <laughs> had a different tune. <laughs> yeah. mean? Pressure on Tuka now. We have to get results. That would have been the article. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So. If he doesn't get result versus Bournemouth, he's facing the sack. Um, we're going to wrap things up. Lastly, Valen, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. Potter doesn't have the ego someone like Klopp, Tuku, Jose, Pep has. Potter looks like he's just enjoying the journey. <laughs> I mean, look, that's probably a bit harsh, but I, I hear the sentiment that you're trying to say here. As I said, laissez faire, like sort of relaxed. As Eunice said, he's seen this man live and he asked, Are we going to win? Oh, that's, that's the aim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, we need to, we, we, like, we, we've got to try and get some results now. And I'll try and up this. It's like, this isn't going in the right direction. He's like, yep, that's uh, that's our aim. <laughs> All right, cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> cheers. cheers, man. I want to have an English tea now. <laughs> All right, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap things up. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Eunice, thank you so much for joining. And, hey, no uh, problem. Yeah. We shall see you guys very, very soon. Chelsea just around the corner. Buckle up, everyone. Buckle up. <laughs> see ya.